All right, so I went ahead and added the HMI graphics to um, our cooling skid, which is what we added for our PIDE loop. And I thought, well, it's best if we come back in here and actually come back and revisit the auto tune of the PID, because really that's that's going to be the best atmosphere. So let's go ahead and do that. Now keep in mind, um, we currently aren't scanning the PID loop because we have this permission mixer permission in here. So what we need to do is we need to come back in here and remember that's that's when all the batch is active. Uh, we've added all our ingredients and we are currently giving permission for that to happen. Now keep in mind we need to go ahead and do that. So let's come in here and do some testing. Now uh, we're going to come back in here and add a branch in here and we're going to call this bit add a bit and we're going to add a bit called uh, let's just call it ZZZ um, system setup All right and that way we have a tag we can come in here and toggle for doing system setup now I'm going to come in here and do that now that's going to enable us to have our PID start scanning again and have this back into a scannable routine now we can leave that bit we don't have to have that permission bit in there but I figured it's best to show you how to manually control stuff and outside of the actual routine now keep in mind we can't manually tune because we've hard coded a one into the the uh, probe request and uh, the probe automatic are right, so what we've done here is we basically hard coded it to say it's going to be an automatic all the time now we do have an auto tune tag and let me show you that now you cannot actually auto tune unless you're in manual so if I acquire this tag right now and I go in automatic or go in auto tune and I hit start it's going to fail because it's in invalid mode. So what we need to do is we need to come back in here and edit this out. Come back in and our pins are not here that we need. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here and add our pins. So you go into tag or go into parameters and you scroll down and you'll start seeing the tags you need. Right. So in our case, um, let's get down to it. We need the operator request. Uh, we need the operator request right here and we need the operator in manual okay so we're gonna add our two pins in here and we're gonna add in a tag in here instead of a one we're gonna call this auto mode okay then we'll make that tag and come over here and then what we're gonna do is throw in a not and and not right so basically say if it's not this it's going to do this so then we're going to come in and put the probe manual and operator request right in here just like this and I think we're on the wrong one so let me back that up it's very easy to do so, so that's why some of these pins is best just, just to get rid of them if you're not using them so we're going to go to operator request and then operator manual alright so let's come over here let's put a, a value of one in here so you can see the transition alright so right now it's currently throwing a one in here and here now if I change this to a zero it's going to throw a value of one here so now the loop is in uh, manual mode okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to auto tune and our step change is actually added, right? So our change rate, we do not want to change over 100. Um, we're actually controlling it from, I believe the set points inside of here are from 100 to zero. We can change that to whatever we want to. Um, but again, when it comes down to it, that's limiting the factors, right? Um, so it depends on if you want to have that as like, what is your low cooling point? And what is your high cooling point? Our low cooling point realistically is no lower than 50, and our high is no no greater than 90. So we can add that in there, and then change our auto tune limit to no greater than 90, and then go into and make sure you apply. Go into auto tune. Now the step change is how the rate of change you want, which is basically a really minute number. It's a percentage, so generally like a five is perfect. Now we're going to hit start. It's going to be in progress it's going to start the progress and it's going to come in here and check the dead band of the system and it's going to come in and give us our tuning parameters now currently we used to have 0.25 and then 5 right so it gives us our current and I'll show you this too um, we'll go ahead and accept the, the slow 
response, set the gains to the PID, come over here, open up our loop, and I wanted to show you this because the PID itself, right here, actually when we threw it in automatic mode, or in auto-tune, what it did is it automatically assumed, and it automatically uh, threw it a little bit of a, uh, an error in there, and it corrected it so that it could actually get the the proper settings of, of what it should be for the actual calculation that it's running. Now right now we're currently in independent mode, right? We're currently in independent mode and we've now set our gains to what it should be, right? So they, they're saying actually it's okay, let's use derivative. So let's actually throw a, a small little curve in there while we're doing testing. Let's turn our trend back on so we can see it and I'm going to come over here and throw a deviation in here because we're currently on set point throw a deviation here of let's just say 10 throw a deviation in there of 10 and we're going to let the system get out and let's see how fast it actually gets back into and let's see if the tune is even good so first we want to do an auto tune we want to make sure that it's working as we said it should now here's the thing too, we didn't, uh, now I notice it's not even responding is because we did not throw it back in automa automatic mode. So let's throw it back in automatic mode and let's let it start responding. So it's not going to respond at all if we're in manual. So that was uh, somewhat of my bad to, to not throw it back in uh, auto. But let's see what the tune does. So we'll do this one more time uh, just to show you. but you actually see it's actually doing really really well so the tune that it actually did for the auto tune as its slow response is perfect now that is again slow response so let's go back in here to here and let's go in here and change this so let's come in here to the auto tune and let's go change our we can just go open up auto tune again and change to medium or fast let's set it to fast and let's come over here and make sure that took so now we're fast okay we're still in automatic mode so let's throw in another deviation and let's, let's check our trend before we do we're perfect so let's throw another deviation of zero in there okay so that's throwing it off and let's see how fast that actually gets back into tune so this is going to be a fast tune uh, or a fast response of that auto tune so I'm going to actually go throw this in uh, dependent mode as well and then we're going to, when we do that, we're going to do another auto tune. So this is working fairly well for what we've got. So this, this you can see the tunes are working. Okay. So let's go in here and let's throw a complete curveball in here. Let's throw it in dependent mode. Let's hit apply. Let's go to auto tune. And let's actually change this to manual mode. And we're going to let the, the tune settle out, which is it is settled out. So make sure when you change modes and before you tune, you, you're, you're pretty close to set point or you're not far away from your set point so that there's not much error that has to be overcome. All right, so now we're going to go to auto tune. We'll auto tune again. Now we're going to hit the auto tune and let it do. Go ahead and let it calculate its process. Now keep in mind it is doing like a little bump test. It's doing like a little... Um, test itself. So let's go in here and this is going to be the the curve for the dependent. Let's do a slow gain for the dependent to verify that it checks. We'll hit OK. Throw that back into auto. Now keep in mind this is running the new tuning for the dependent. We are in dependent so let's just see how this works. Okay so let's throw a curve in there of 10 degrees and check our loop and let's make sure our loop has a good tune now dependent or independent in both auto tune should work really really well but keep in mind that you should be in a, a settled state 90 percent of the only reason it looks really really good for my environment is because i am not using a real process in a real process you're going to have some kind of variable that may not be as stable or sitting still um, when it comes to what we're doing here. So this looks really really well for the dependent curve of what we did. So let's come over here to our PID and let's open up auto tune and let's change to the fast. 
So we'll, we'll change the fast. We'll set the gain to the PID. Okay. Now let's do that curve one more time of zero. Let's see what the fast does. Uh, this is going to be a, a again the dependent, and it's going to be the fast uh, response. So as far as what the auto tune got. Okay. So these are all of the attributes. Okay. So this looks really really good. Whether it be independent or dependent, it works really, really well. So let's come in here and, sh and actually sh uh, look at this one more time. So we can leave it in dependent. For the loop we currently have, we can leave it you know, operating in dependent right now. Now for this, we're going to do auto mode. We can actually tie this back into our controls over here and only allow it to be auto-tuned when the actual uh, user is changed to a high level user but I feel like you know we we kind of owed it to ourselves to come in here and do the PID tuning and the auto tuning showing an automatic mode and how did it actually do that before we carried on with the actual testing and system testing of that and adding the the graphical interface for the PIDE instruction that way you can kind of get a base understanding of the best principle of auto tune and the way it worked right and whether you're in independent mode or dependent mode keep in mind that a real world process is not going to be as stable as what we're doing here so what I mean by that is your physical devices and your physical things that are, are actually taking place let's just say you have fluid fluid going through a pipe or a valve that has to shift or something of that nature it's not going to the independent the the PV coming back whatever your PV is may not be as stable is mine in it then again it may be if it's a really slow process it could be very stable just keep in mind you're as stable as possible when you're going in and doing your auto tune that's going to give you the best results now, and most of the time an auto tune is going to get you right in right into the the good atmosphere of the tuning parameters and you can manually adjust it from there in a real world device okay because there's variables in a real world device like pump speed fluid flows uh, pressures, temperatures, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different things and it, it depends on your feedback which is your P, your PV of your PIDE. That's going to be a major factor in that. So with all that said, hopefully we passed on a lot of information and we gave you a lot of knowledge passed for the PID Auto-Tune. With all that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.